The year is 2019 and I was about to set out on three Caminos, the Portuguese, the Norte and the Ingles. And I was just coming off of doing the Via Francigena and I had learned a ton about the gear that I was supposed to carry with me on that trip. So I reshuffled everything and I got new things, uh, new tools that were just coming out at the time, like the Insta360 ONE X, and I was going to test it out on the Camino Portuguese for the first time. Now, I don't like to do videos, gear videos like this, because technology advances so fast and things are outdated so quickly, like most of it here. But most of the things that I have, they already have a new version that is very similar uh, to it. I get asked a lot of questions about the cameras that I use, the drones that I use. So let's do that. I started vlogging in 2017 when I did the Camino Frances. I took the camera that I had at the time. It was the Canon 5D Mark IV. I was just coming off of a career in TV and that's what I had. The DJI Mavic Pro had recently come out like a couple of months before. I was learning how to use it, but I managed to fly from St. John Pierre de Port all the way to Santiago de Compostela and then to the end of the world. So before we go into today's video, roll that intro, please. Hi guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is Efren Gonzalez. I do Camino de Santiago videos. I've done the Via Francigena, the Inca Trail, the Lost City, a few of the Seven Summits, and soon I will be doing uh, the Appalachian Trail. So in 2017, I went on to do the Camino Frances, the Camino de Santiago in Spain, and I took with me the Canon 5D Mark IV with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens and a shotgun mic. Now, as I mentioned before, the cable that connects to the camera broke the connection inside and soon I had to rely on the onboard microphone on the camera, which is not ideal for recording audio. I was picking up all the wind noise and also the lens autofocusing. So when I did the Via Francigena in 2018, I took the same camera with a different lens. I took the 16 to 35 wide angle lens and I also took a 100 millimeter micro. I took a different shotgun mic similar to this one and I also took a stabilizer kind of like the one that I'm holding right now. This is the Crane 3. I took the DJI Ronin S but I sold it. Extremely heavy setup. Now you know why I took a trolley on uh, that trip. In 2019, a new piece of technology came out that allowed me to replace this setup with something that is much, much lighter. And that is a DJI Osmo Pocket. I also had to mention that while I was doing the Via Francigena, that camera that I just showed you got wet in a storm and it died on me. So I had to rely on my phone to vlog for the next three or four days until I got to Vesanson. And once I was there, I stayed at a hotel that there was a camera store next door to it and there I got the Canon M50 which is the camera that I ended up vlogging for the remaining of the Via Francigena and then the one that I took on this trip. I bought this camera with an 18 to 150 millimeter lens ideal for those extreme close-ups of like telephoto shots of objects way out in the distance. It's not good for panning because of the rolling shutter but if you want like a dead lock shot of a subject and you just hold your breath and hold on to it especially if you're zoomed in to 150 millimeters it is just great i would also get to use it at night because it has better low light quality than the, the osmo pocket or any other cameras that i brought along with me so the dji osmo pocket replaced the canon 5d mark 4 and the stabilizer that i took uh, on the via francigena and it's in such a small and compact uh, setup. What I love the most about this camera is that it's a mechanical uh, stabilizer, much like the one on the drones. So when I was talking to you guys and I was walking, the shot was locked on me, steady, and it didn't have that handheld uh, look to it. The other thing that I will use it for, in addition to a, a selfie stick, is that I could use it to get shots on my legs as I was walking. I could also put it like behind me for some over the shoulder shots or for panning shots or like kind of like to create like a crane going up when I didn't have the space to fly the drone. So multi-purpose uh, kit. I dropped it a couple of times and I broke the front screen on it, the protector. When I was in, in the Camino Portuguese, I was trying to get a shot of me walking up like a small 
a lighthouse and the gust of wind came along and knocked it over and it smashed the, the screen. The other camera that I brought is the Insta360 ONE X. It also came out a few months before I went on this trip and this camera gave me the opportunity to have a wide angle shot. It kind of feels like a drone shot that's following me pretty close, kind of like what you see behind me, but it erases the selfie stick. How does it do that? You know, you may ask. Well, the selfie stick fits perfectly in there, so when the two images are stitched back together, it erases the selfie stick, and that's what revolutionized kind of like this camera. Also, since you're recorded in 360, you can reframe the shot in post-production. You can get multiple shots of the same take. Like sometimes I will get a shot of myself walking and then I would just turn the, the camera and just get a shot of what was in front of me or to the side or wherever. I would also use it for those extreme zoom ins when I am on Google Earth Pro and I zoom all the way in kind of like a, the Google Street View. So what I would do is I had the camera on the selfie stick on top of me and I would just do this motion behind me and just mash it in with a zoom in and he made out for a great uh, shot. Also with this camera, I did the 360 tours of the Albergues where I stay on the Camino del Norte mostly and the Portuguese. There's a new version of this camera. What is the difference? Well, for one, uh, the new camera is waterproof. This one isn't, I had to take this uh, water housing with me on the Portuguese, I only used it once and I didn't like it because you could always see the, the housing in the shot. I wanted to use it for when it was raining. So after I noticed that it wasn't going to work out, I sent this uh, back home. So yeah, the new camera is waterproof, which is great. And it also records ambisonic audio. What is that? That's like 360 audio. So when you're watching the video on a VR headset and you look around, if there's a sound coming from this side, if you turn around, you hear it behind it. If you look at it, it's in front of you. So 360 VR audio. Moving on to the next camera, and that will be my drone. On this trip, I took out uh, the DJI Mavic Air. This is the first version. There's an Air 2 already out there. And I love this drone. I took it on the Via Francigena and I took it on all this Camino. So most of the drone footage that you've seen from me is from uh, this uh, beautiful uh, drone. I already have a new one and that is the Mini 2. The one thing that I miss the most is the active uh, track feature, but the Mini 2 is way more compact. It weighs less and there's less uh, drone regulations because it weighs under 250 uh, grams. I took uh, two batteries uh, with this drone and the charger, which is uh, a bit heavy, uh, also has two uh, USB uh, ports. So I, this was like my main hub when I had to recharge all my electronics once I got to uh, the Alberghi. This is the pouch where I had the drone with me at all times. Back here, I had the controller. I would have it hanging from my backpack and people, when they saw it, they just thought that I was carrying uh, headphones with me. Moving on to uh, my next camera. It is actually my phone that I took with me. I vlog with this phone on the Via Francigena when my camera got wet for like a couple of days. You have to make do when something happens and you're out there, you have to adapt to uh, the situation. I will get seldomly, I will get some shots with this uh, phone, especially if I didn't want to uh, bring some attention to me. Maybe I was in uh, at a bar or at a restaurant eating. I just want to get a shot of the food. Sometimes I would just use uh, my cell phone with me. I would also use it to fly a drone. This is where I could put it, the remote control and see what I was uh, filming at all times also to control the Insta360, and I could also uh, connect to uh, the DJI Osmo Pocket via a Wi-Fi adapter that I took with me so uh, that I could see the image on a bigger screen because the screen on this is uh, tiny and sometimes the shots will come out out of focus simply because I have my glasses on and it couldn't log on to uh, my face. But I couldn't tell because the screen is such a small screen that, uh, you know, it happens. And the last camera that I took with me, and I didn't get to use it as much as I should. And that is the Views XR. This is a 360 camera. So why did I take another 360 camera when I already had the Insta360 ONE X? Well, for one, the workflow on that one is a lot easier, a lot faster. You could do it on your phone. You have the software for the computer. So I decided to go for those uh, overhead shots with the Insta360 ONE X. And I started using this one 
for 3D VR immersion uh, pictures that I took. I took a bunch of them on the Portuguese and on the Norte. Did not get to take as many videos as I should have. And once I got back home, I started editing all the, the pictures and I put it in a montage video, which you can see it uh, up here. I'll put up the link. And then I, you know, I got a couple of videos. I got one in the Santiago facing the cathedral. So whenever I want to go back and I want to feel like I'm sitting there, I just get my Oculus Quest. I put it on and man, it is such a big difference. I mean, you can watch all these videos in 2D on your phone. You can scroll around in the 180 sphere that it records, but it does not compare to watching this with a VR headset. Whenever I do another Camino, I'm going to try to do more uh, videos in 3D, more immersive videos with uh, ambisonic audio. And I mean, I want to take it to another level since, in my opinion, this is the future. I also had this little adapter over here for my phone so I could check out the pictures and the videos from uh, the 3D camera. Now, once I got to a Fisterra, I wanted to get a 3D shot like from behind me of me standing in the rocks with the ocean in front of me. So I put the 3D camera on the selfie stick and the wind blew it over and uh, one of the lenses cracked, as you can see here. So there goes my 3D camera. I'm going to have to get a new one. I was waiting for a new model to come out, but as of 2021, there's nothing new out there yet. But I'm going to wait before I uh, buy the bullet and I get a new uh, 3D camera. Now, by the way, the wind did uh, <laughs> blow this a few times with the Insta360 ONE X on it. Thank God that it was always over uh, grass. You can see a few shots that I have here where the camera just fell over and it hit the ground hard. But uh, it didn't crack the lens, so, you know, it would have uh, completely altered the way that I do my vlogs. It would have lost this camera on the Camino uh, Portuguese, which was where I dropped it for the first uh, time. Now, moving on to audio. Here's uh, an area where I wanted to dig in and, you know, try new things. When I did the Camino Frances and the Via Francigena, I simply recorded with a shotgun microphone. And I kept saying to myself, it is 2019. Why am I recording in mono when we have stereo sound, surround sound, ambisonic sound? So I took with me this uh, field recorder, which I'm using right now to record this uh, video. That is the Tascam DR40X. I did a video review, which I'll post up here. The great thing about this field recorder is that I, it had just come out at the time. I had two XLR inputs. I could also record a stereo all at the same time. I brought with me the Rode Mic uh, Laugh Plus. This microphone is actually made so that you can connect it to your cell phone and record clean audio with your cell phone, something that I did uh, many times. But in order to connect it to this unit, I needed two adapters. And one is the Rode SR3 TRRS to TRS cable adapter. That's a mouthful, but it pretty much converts the connector. As you can see here, this one has three lines. It goes from three to two, just to keep it simple. Then I could connect this uh, lavalier to uh, my Canon uh, M50. So I could connect the lav and uh, record videos like this instead of using a, a shotgun mic, which I didn't bring uh, on this uh, trip. So once I had this cable, I needed an extra adapter, which is the Rode VXLR Plus, an adapter which converts from a 3.5 millimeter TRS to XLR. It also lowers the voltage, the voltage, the phantom power from 48 volts from uh, the Tascam uh, field recorder, to three to five volts, which is what the microphone uses, the, is the power that it gets uh, from the cell phone. So with this, I could just connect it to uh, my uh, field recorder. So here's a setup. If I was vlogging with the pocket, I would have the pocket like this. I had the lavalier connected to the field recorder. I had the recorder in this hand. I was recording stereo, which was uh, great for when I was in the forest and you could hear the birds or if a car will pass me by, you could hear it. If you're wearing uh, headphones, you could, it feels like you're there. So I had the stereo, I had the laugh, and I also had the audio from this as a backup. And then in post, I had to sync all the audio. That was the, you know, what it would take the longest. 
I will use this to just listen to a podcast on my phone or to check that the audio that was recorded was fine and that it didn't have any noises or or it would just simply cut out at some point. So that was uh, what I would use. I also had uh, this small LED light that I would use at night to close all the videos. I also had this light on uh, the Via Francigena, so I would just hold it with one hand and the camera on the other. But it does have a, a hot shoot adapter, so you can put it on the camera like this. So if you don't have the shotgun mic, this is what I would do to, uh, to vlog at night and film myself. But I could also just use it uh, as a separate unit if I wanted to light a subject and uh, get a better uh, shot. Now, when it came to uh, power on the Caminos, when I was in Porto, I went to a store and I bought this uh, charger for uh, double A batteries. I was trying to get something smaller, but they, this, they didn't have it. I needed uh, batteries for the field recorder. I also bought in that store this uh, three-way plug so I could just, when I got to Adia Burger, get in, charge all my electronics at once. And if there was another pilgrim that needed to use a plug, I could always uh, let him use one of the threes. I also had this one that I brought from, uh, from here, from the U.S., that it converts from U.S. to Europe. And that was for uh, the devices that I had like the camera charger and then when i was there in one of the albergues somebody left their charger behind and i will use this to charge uh, my phone so this was uh my kit when it came to our uh, charging in combination with the charger for the drone since i told you guys that it had two uh, usb plugs that i could use so i was trying to charge everything at once you know as fast as i possibly uh, could I took two batteries for the, the Canon M50. I think I took two for the drone. I had an extra battery for the Insta360. And when I was in Santander, I bought a power bank for my phone because it was so cold that the battery was just draining super fast. Also, when I was in Santander, let's go over data management on the Camino. I first, uh, when I went on the trip, I took uh, this hard drive this is just a regular Western digital drive. I think it's like two terabytes. And then the way that I was transferring all the footage was by using the File Hub Plus unit. So I could control this with my phone. I could put my SD cards here, connect the hard drive to the unit, and it would transfer all the footage over. The thing is that it would take forever. It would take anywhere between half an hour to an hour every single day for me to transfer all the footage and it just, you know, it started getting in the way of me having a good time on the Camino. So when I got to Santander, I was on the lookout for like an electronic store. I was looking for like a, like an Apple store. And I found this hard drive, which I bought. This one is the Western Digital My Passport Wireless Pro. The great thing about this one is that I could just connect the SD card to it. It would immediately dump all the footage into the hard drive. And it would do it like three times as fast as the old method. So I send this hard drive back home. If you guys remember on day three on the Camino del Norte, I sent it home and it got here just a couple of days before I did. So it took over a month for this hard drive to make it from Spain all the way here to Miami. And I've been editing all the vlogs off of this hard drive. So it still works. That's it, guys. That's all the gear that I took with me. If you want to know how much this weigh, it was half of all the weight that I was carrying with me at all times. So on these three Caminos, I took about 22 pounds worth of gear. 11 pounds was the, my clothes, my backpack and all that. And the other half was all the gear that I took with me. Now, since I'm going to do the Appalachian Trail and that one, it's going to be an epic adventure twice as long as the Via Francigena I had to carry with me. Uh, my shelter, like three to five days worth of food and water, cooking a, a stove, you know. There are regulations there where I cannot take my drone, so I had to reshuffle everything that I would take with me now. I had to buy a ton of gear, and I will be doing a video about that one coming up next. I'll put up the link up here once it is uh, ready. So this is it. Thank you guys for watching. Please, if you enjoy the content on the channel, please don't forget to uh, subscribe, hit the like button, and share the videos with your friends. And if you want to support me on the Appalachian Trail, 
You can also consider hitting the join button and becoming a channel member since I'm going to quit my job soon so I can go on that epic adventure. Guess I'll see you guys on the next video.